I'm going to be brutally honest about this uncomfortable truth of being a wig maker. I'm going to be spilling all the secrets that nobody talks about before you embark on being a wig maker. So you don't end up losing so much money and starting all over again like I did. I'm going to be saying all of this while taking off this wig that I installed a few weeks ago um, to test. And I'm going to install another wig that I need to test, which you should be doing if you're a wig maker. The first uncomfortable truth is that your friends and families would actually not buy from you until you've been bought from. Being bought from meaning that you get popular, a lot of people are buying from you, and then your friends will realize, oh, oh yeah, you do hair, don't you? So you should never take it personal because you don't actually do it intentionally well some people don't and also I'm sure that you haven't patronized all of your friends that offer different services because for me it's visually impossible like I can do that but that would literally mean buying from everybody or some of my friends that offer the same services but you need to understand that it is part of the game you need to stand out when you stand out trust me your friends and family will come to you and buy from you that's the honest truth by the way, I'm using the C22 solvent. This is what I use, it's just easiest work for me. You can also use oils. I just spray it on and I just massage it into my skin to take it off. The second uncomfortable truth is you are going to worry about your first few orders. At least even up to like your 50 orders. You're gonna worry about things like, oh, is it going to get there? Or are they going to like it? Or is it going to fit right? Will I get any chargeback? You're going to worry about things like that because number one, you haven't accumulated a lot of experience to know if this is going to be a problem or not. And most times, even the ones that you don't even expect for it to be a problem might be a problem. Being an entrepreneur is not all the glamour and glitz that you see on social media where everyone is sitting down with a book and a paper and a pen with a laptop in front of them oh and with a lot of um shopify receipts it doesn't happen like that all the time girl like it doesn't don't let anyone fool you so you're going to worry and it is okay for you to worry it is part of the business oh my gosh feels so good if you like to know the verdict on this hair the vendor everything i think about it how it's holding up let me know in the comment section just write hair and i know you want that so let's go on to the next uncomfortable truth about being a wig maker if you don't show your face nobody is going to buy from you there's no point in being a mystery man or woman here except you are giving an exceptional service something that stands out something that i would see and i'll be like oh my god something that it's a hook on its own without your face being there and even still even if you offer that kind of service you, we need to see the person behind the brand because people buy people people don't actually buy products um, except they're really in need of that product then they will probably go to Amazon they don't really care about who did it or who didn't do it but we're talking about beauty products here there has to be a person behind that product it doesn't have to be you the wig maker no but it can be like your ambassador there has to be a face that they can see that they can relate to because there's no point being all mystery mystery if you want to make money there's actually no point except you don't mind not making money that's the honest truth i've washed it with shampoo so i'm gonna go in with this leave-in conditioner and this argan secret secret oil it's just to moisturize it before the next install my edges are precious to me i grew them recently because i had a i'm sure you don't want to hear all of this let's go into the next one and this is your best vendor will try it with you don't trust anybody the vendor that you love and you're like oh my god this vendor gives me the best product gives me the best hair you're probably going to order like maybe 10k or 20k worth of orders and within that 10k and 20k they'll probably put in 2000 worth of bad hair in there yes so you need to actually buy it in batches. If this has happened to you before, please let me know in the comment section because it happened to me quite a few times. It doesn't mean I'm gonna stop maybe patronizing that vendor, 
but I'm going to let them know the first time it happened to me um, that was the last time actually so I stopped buying big massive orders in a go so what I do is I do it in batches so for example if I have it in mind I'm gonna spend about 20k to buy hair I'm gonna spend 5k this week 5k next week but I'll let them know that I am buying this amount but I want them in batches or what you can also do to avoid paying charges like so many charges you can pay but they should send you the hair in batches never get the whole order because there they try to sneak in some like bad hair and you won't realize until maybe like one month down the line and you're trying to get some bundles out you're thinking okay why does this look funny yeah let me try the wig on to see i still need to put elastic bands the side part wig i don't know how i'm gonna rock this you know i'm more of a minimalist person so i always struggle with big hair the next uncomfortable truth i'm using the rk by kiss in 13 shade 13 next one is that you cannot please everybody i try to please all my customers like it really affects me if i've maybe given you a service and then you don't like what i've given you i get really bothered and i'm always thinking about it i'm always stressing about it but what i've realized is no matter what you do, you will not be able to please everyone. Is I try to please 100% of everyone. If at least I get a 99% um, of my customers that are happy, and even the 1%, if I try to do everything and they're still not happy, and I've done everything and they're still not budging, I just leave the rest to God because there's nothing you can do. I take the bands off when I'm doing my install because I always like to bring it like this. Another thing you need to know is the fact that your the target audience you have in mind might not actually turn out to be the target audience that will make you money. So you need to be flexible. I'm not saying to try everything, but for example, you might have in mind to have to be selling raw hair or to be having um colored wigs, but you might turn out it might turn out to be those ones that are not actually making you money. So you need to be flexible. Be around your niche, not go out of your niche. Be around it, but try different things within your niche. I'm just, um, to be honest, I I would know if this is going to, if I'm gonna wear this once I try to reduce it because this seems so big. Let me know, guys. Let me know what you think about this. I'm going to be using this, and I'm gonna be putting some camel rose in it as well. Um, well, there's um, some oil, jojoba oil, jojoba oil is quite light, so I'm gonna use jojoba. Oh, actually, I'm gonna use the I have this left, so I'll just use this one. I'll use that one. Okay, the next uncomfortable truth is that be ready to have some customers ask you so many questions and they don't end up buying anything. Like, it can be frustrating, but what I try to do is I try to answer all the questions that I have. I've also made sure that my website has enough information that kind of reduce them coming back to ask the same question over and over again. But you're gonna get some people that would ask you all the questions in the world. They will literally ask you everything askable, but they will end up not buying anything. But I treat everyone the same because you know what? They might end up buying later, but most times the people that ask the most questions actually don't end up buying anything i don't know why but since i've started this hair I, once they start asking so many questions mm, they probably have somebody else in mind that they're gonna purchase from you're like the option b and when they realize that you're not even um, you're even more expensive than that other person they'll go to that other person so that's what it is so be ready for that don't be discouraged don't get too excited when you get a dm saying I want to buy something wait until wait until that uh they've already bought it before you get excited because and even when they've bought it obviously if your products are fundable because mine aren't if they've been ordered because they're custom but if your products are refundable <laughs> wait for at least 14 days or whatever your refund is to then count that as your sale because People change their minds a lot and you don't want to be caught. You don't want to be upset maybe when it comes 
to the fact that you thought you made a sale and you haven't so that is what it is i'm gonna split this into two so i can get into it more i'm just trying to tame the hair actually taming i think it's much tamer now i think i've tamed it enough what do you think guys would you prefer it the way it was before or do you prefer it now i prefer it now this is my this is much more my style this can actually be worn as glueless but the reason i'm putting a glue on is i get tempted to take it off and not wear it again obviously because i'm testing it there's a train passing if you can hear that noise but anyway so obviously because i'm testing the hair i don't want to get tempted to take it off so that's why i'm gluing it on my head next uncomfortable truth is the fact that you might make so much sales in one month one and you end up not making any sales the second month this is obviously very common when you're just starting your week or if you're not putting your all in all into it and you're taking time don't plan on the amount of sales you've made in month one and then plan maybe to maybe to replenish stock and everything and use that to plan for the second month it's not going to work like that your month and month month in month will change but you will get to a point where you have like a base and with that base you can make a minimum and then you can make on top of it or just that minimum i've been able to answer some of your questions please bear in mind that this is not to change your mind or to make you feel like it's impossible to be a wig maker or to thrive in the wig business trust me there's a lot of money to be made but you need to understand the cons that comes with it and you need to be aware and you also need to know that this happens to everyone it's not a unique thing don't think about getting the money first think about growing your skill first and then think about the money so that is how i did it and i hope i'm able to help you if you have any questions please leave it in the comment section below or if there are other videos you like me to share with you guys please let me know in the comment section please don't forget to like subscribe thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one